I love Sunday night because only the fanatics show up, you music lovers. We're glad to have uh, Jerry and Rachel that are here. Jerry's there. Rachel's in the back. She's running everything. If Jerry sounds good, blame Rachel. <laughs> glad you all are here. Uh, we're going to sing a song a cappella. All right? You know that song? A cappella? <laughs> Just to get our voices warmed up and to let Jerry know it ain't going to be long. Why everybody sitting on this side? I don't get it. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. Hey, Jan. Let's do this. Hey, R.D. You don't like piano music? Oh. They're sitting in their normal seats. That's the ab normal. Thanks, Jess. Thank you, sir. He's the boss. Are you all ready to sing? Yeah. Let's do this one. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living. Just because he lives. Now look at her. I was looking around to see how many people were singing, and you must not know that song, right? Were you singing it? Okay, I just thought you, she was going. <laughs> you know, a lot of times when, when they, you didn't know the words, you say, you just live watermelon, 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 so they all know. <laughs> Let's open in prayer. Lord, thank you. For music. You made all seven major notes and everything in between. And you made music to give God praise. You made instruments too to give God praise. We thank you, Father, for creating music and for letting us, the redeemed, sing your praises. Grace us with your presence this evening, Lord, we pray. And everything that's sung, said, or done is for your glory. And you said, if you be lifted up, Lord, you draw us all even closer. So do that tonight, we pray. Anoint Jerry as he plays. And I pray that, God, that you'll receive all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. 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 Would you welcome all the way from Colorado, Jerry Nelson. Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing your praise. Streams of mercy, never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise.
Thank you. I know you all recognize that piece. What was the name of it? Chariots. Chariots of Fire. Very good. And probably not a bad time to be playing Chariots of Fire because it came out of the Olympics, really out of a story that originates back in 1924 when a runner um, decided he wasn't going to run on Sunday because it was against his faith and his beliefs. He got somebody that volunteered to run in his place, and so he ended up training for the 100, but had to run the 400 without any practice. Took the gold. <laughs> yeah. Consequently, God got the glory in all of the newspapers around the world because of his testimony, an incredible story. So uh, anybody been watching the Olympics? Raise your hand. I see both of you, that's excellent. <laughs> and we got, a, we got a lot of things happening these weeks. Did you know that the Super Bowl is on tonight? <laughs> How many are videoing it so you can watch it later? Oh, good. Uh, give me your address, if you don't mind, please. <laughs> I, I, I was uh, doing a concert in Arizona, and I scheduled it right on top of the Super Bowl. Didn't realize it. And I asked the pastor, well, is this something I should be aware of? Should we cancel it? And he said, you know what? All of our people, for the most part, it was a sizable church, probably 200 in the audience, but a church of 800. And he said, no, um, most of our people come from Canada, and they don't care a hoot about your Super Bowl. <laughs> but I see there are a few who enjoy it, and I like football. And so I, uh, I watch the Super Bowl, and that's about it uh, for the year. So those are two big things happening. But another big thing, it's called, guys, I'm just tipping you off. It's called Valentine's Day. Get the timing right on that, okay? <laughs> so, uh, think about Valentine's Day and the first uh, lovers in the world. The love story of Adam and Eve. And I picture them walking down through the Garden of Eden and kicking up leaves and just enjoying holding hands along the trail. And uh, Eve says to Adam, been a long time since you told me. Do you really love me, Adam? Adam said, well, Eve, who else in this whole wide world would I be in love with? <laughs> they continue on down the trail, and eventually Eve decides to pop the same question. Well, Adam, um, or Adam popped the question, Eve, um, do you love me? She says, you know, Adam, that I love you. But I have just one complaint. And they kick up a few more leaves and they keep going down the trail. Adam says, well, what could that possibly be? You got a complaint against me? Yeah, she says, I just wish you wouldn't leave your clothes strewn all over the floor. Well, so we're going to sing some love so uh, songs tonight. Um, there are love songs that we sing to Jesus about him, but we sing most, more often about his love for us. And I'm going to invite you to sing along with me on some songs that are very familiar to you and to me. And the simple choruses, um, you know this one, oh, how he loves you and me. Let's sing it together. Oh, how he loves you and me. 
Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power has no boundary known unto man. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. Such love, such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love that God could love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is the love's like. Sing it again. Such love, such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love that God could love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this, that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful, wonderful, wonderful is love like this. Oh, How measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. Probably appropriate that we sing more love songs about his love for us even though we love him that much but why do we love him because he first loved us that's where it started gets going this direction how can you do anything but love him in return when you realize the wealth of his love and how far it extends to people be speaking more for myself very unlovely, very unlovable, but he loves me. Anyway, that's pretty incredible. The song that you may not have sung in many years, as a matter of fact. Real simple song. Uh, it goes like this. Tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. That little chorus, it's a pretty old one. It's been around for a long time. But you know, I, I would guess that today, uh, Phil, that song was sung in uh, probably 2,000 different languages around the world. And probably in 100 different music styles, depending on where you go. Matter of fact, if you happened to be uh, worshiping in Nashville today, you'd have probably heard Jesus Loves Me sound a little bit like this.
Jesus loves me, Nashville style. We're going to take a little trip around the world, as a matter of fact, and see if you can guess where in the world Jesus loves me would sound like this. Keep the answers to yourself now. No cheating. For one point. Where? Okay, Caribbean and any place down there, I'll take that answer. Um, now on this next one, you've got to name the country on the first note. You got it, China. Pretty good clue on the screen, right? China was the correct answer. Um, ah, you're too good. We're going to make the next one a little more difficult. See if you can name the country in which Jesus loves me would sound like this. That country is. I didn't hear you singing along. <laughs> Feel free to sing along. Now here you've got a name, the city. And that city is? I know. I heard a bunch of you say New Orleans. No, it's, it's a two-syllable word. No, Nolens, that's right. Nolens, Nolens, okay? All right. We're going to make one more, one more stop around the world. In this country, they manufacture an instrument that sounds like, I'm going to play. Name the instrument in the country for two points.
What's the instrument? Music box. The country. Switzerland, Austria, Germany. You know, the puzzling thing has always been to me how these Swiss people can make the finest jewel pieces and they can't make a music box play the song all the way to the end and stop. <laughs> Every music box I've ever heard, it stops in the middle. So what do you do? Wind it up. <laughs> and then it sounds like this. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day.
Well, we who have been in love and are still in love, I hope, we express that love in a variety of different ways. You've been to the store, guys, and checked out the Hallmark section, I hope, or maybe picked up a dozen flowers or whatever. But that's one way to express love. Probably not the best way. I mean, that's maybe one way to buy your way into love, but there are a lot of better ways. Just gestures, just touching. And often, um, and I'm guilty of this, I don't, I don't touch Rachel in just a loving way. I go down to my office. My office is on main floor in our house. Hers is upstairs. And uh, we com communicate quite often um, via email. <laughs> That's it. Once in a while, a text, if it's a short one. And uh, so I'm, I'm, if anything, guilty of not expressing love with just touching gestures. Or I could spare her making a meal, and I could make it for her. That she wouldn't construe as an expression of love, though. <laughs> I guarantee you, <laughs> I'm not. I'm all thumbs in the kitchen. Uh, I haven't really introduced Rachel. I lost a, a wife, as many of you have lost spouses. Raise your hand if you've lost a spouse over the years. Okay, a good number of you. I was 41 years with um, Diane, and uh, she passed away through cancer and, and I was alone for a couple years. Those are very alone years, are they not? And then Rachel and I got married about 18 years ago and she had no idea that um, 10 years ago she would do the first of a thousand concerts with me. <laughs> so we've traveled the country and the world, all continents, um, except Antarctica, I haven't been there yet. They haven't picked up their piano yet. Once they get a piano, I'm going down to Antarctica. <laughs> but uh, I want you to welcome my wonderful wife, Rachel, if you would stand, Rachel. She's back there in the, in the booth. Mm -hmm. They're looking at you and saying, is that as tall as she is? <laughs> she didn't really stand, but uh, <laughs> anyhow, uh, we're delighted to be here. And, um, you talk about expressions of love. God has found a number of ways to express his love to us. Shoot up your hand if you got one in mind. How has he, yes. God expresses his love, yeah. Any? Oh, yes. He never fails us. I mean, it, and yes, creation is one. The Bible says it's one of the ways he expresses his love for us. Yes. Is my strength and my salvation. My strength and my salvation. He demonstrates that in so many ways. Uh, his Bible, the Word, is one form of expressing his love. He expresses love to me through other people. They're an example, especially the people who are examples of how God expresses love. He expressed love through his son, right? Certainly. So, I mean, there are so many ways that he continues to shower his love on us. And uh, uh, he mentioned creation. And when I, when I think about the expanse of the universe and how big it is, uh, I mean, I can't get my arms around that. I absolutely can't. And uh, if I asked you, how big is the universe? You probably wouldn't be able to tell me. But whenever I have a question that comes to my mind and I, I, wanna, I want an answer to it, there's somebody that usually has all the answers to questions like that. And his name is Siri. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm going to ask Siri, how big is the universe? Siri, how big is the universe? One sec. One sec. Work on that one. 
Here's an answer from wikipedia.org. The observable universe contains as many as 200 billion galaxies and overall, as many as an estimated 1 times 10 raised to the power of 2 stars, more stars, than all the grains of sand on planet Earth. I hope you remember that. <laughs> you know, Siri expresses it in different ways. I like it uh, when he says, because uh, you can actually reduce it to miles or light years. And uh, there are 93 billion light years from one end to the un other end of the observable universe. That's because it's as far, the light beyond that point hasn't reached us yet. And it'll probably be thousands of years before the light from the next galaxies will ever reach us. So all we know is 93 billion light years. That's a long ways. I, I know D David, <clears throat> the psalmist, was laying out under the stars one night and looked up and got to wondering, this universe is so big. He didn't have a clue. He, uh, he didn't have access to telescopes and whatnot. But he looked up into the night sky and he said, when I look up into the night sky and I see this world, it's all this galaxies, stars, the moons. I can only ask, who are you, David? That you'd pay any attention to me. We put a man on the moon in the late 60s, 1969, I believe it was. And that's opened a huge, wider window of exploration and understanding of our universe. And then we put the Hubble telescope out there. For over 25 years, it's been making circles around the world, taking pictures farther and farther out into space. I mean, the stars are getting so good. They have to use filters to get past the close ones so they can see the stars farther out. Oh, and they spin so fast, some of the galaxies, they create a black hole in the center, like the one you're looking at. And then other galaxies collide in the vortex of that one and explode, creating space dust and gases, which forms these streams of dust and gas called nebula. If you look at the top of this one, it's a famous one. It's been there for jillions of years. It's the Eagle Nebula. See its wide wings spread out? Makes you ask, how big? How big is the universe? We talked about light years. That's how we measure it, not miles. The distance that light travels in a year. Put the pencil to it. At 186,000 miles per second, the speed of light times 60 times 60 times 24 times 365, about six trillion miles to one light year. If you send a rocket up at a nominal 20,000 miles an hour, it would take 25,000 light years to get to the closest galaxy. And there are some, they say, that are 14 billion light years that they've discovered out in space. Get your arms around that. One of the things I like about it, when God created galaxies, he made each one look different. You're looking at several of them. Uh, this one looks a lot like our own Milky Way galaxy. In that shape, uh, the Sombrero galaxy. Here's the huge Andromeda galaxy. Um, oh, I like this one. Two galaxies got together out in space, and they're called the Rose Galaxy. Isn't that cool? Wow. Uh, here's one that's one of the closer ones to our own home, the Milky Way. And it's got a black hole in the center also. It's a whirlpool galaxy. We're going to get in a little tighter on that one and let you look at it. This is a shot from the Hubble telescope as it was exploring the universe. What's different about this one? A cross in the black hole. Can you imagine <laughs> the look on the astronomers' faces when the Hubble sent this photo back to Earth? They said, wow, look at that. 
a cross where we expected just a round black hole. Why would God do that? And it's close to our Milky Way, maybe to remind us <clears throat> that if it wasn't for Jesus' cross, we'd be sucked into a black hole. We can be thankful for the cross. The cross, in fact, of all the symbols in the world is the most significant, most popular, best known symbol. I mean, more than Nike. Yeah. The cross. If, how many have been to Denver? That's where Rachel and I live. If you went up 200, uh, Highway 285, it goes right by our church, Denver First Naz. Keep going to the mountains, and when you start up the canyon, you would see a cross on the south side of the canyon. And that cross, if you can believe it, it's the largest lighted cross in our continent. It's 400 feet high, and it's lit by solar. The Catholics own the property, and they built it. Madeline Murray O'Hare has been trying to get rid of that because it offends so many people in Denver. But it's still there. Sixty years after Madeline, it's still there. The cross, it's beside highways, it's on islands, it's on the top of mountains, it's on office desks, it's on bracelets, it's on necklaces, everywhere. We're reminded of the cross of Jesus. Aren't you glad? It ain't going away. Been around for 2,000 years. You know that chorus. Let's sing it. So I'll cherish rugged cross till my trophies blast I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged and exchange it someday for a crown. Sing again with me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling. exchange it for a crown. God for the cross. (laughs) 
We've celebrated his greatness tonight, and we do again with this great hymn of the church, and you're going to have a chance to sing part of it. So and lift off on Spatial Atlantis as Columbus sets sail on a voyage of science to the space station. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds your hands have made, I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout This universe display Sing it Great thou art, how great thou art, then my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. God, you are great. You are the reason we sing and celebrate. You are mighty. God, you are great. You are the reason we sing and celebrate. You are mighty. God, you are great. You are the reason we sing and celebrate. You are mighty. Reason we sing and celebrate. Sing it once again.
Has this been great or what? Yes. Give him a nice hand. Will you do that? <laughs> Carrie and Rachel? Wow, wonderful. Yeah. Some people are missing it, aren't they? Yeah. God made music every note and everything in between and has gifted people like Jerry to be able to take us on a trip around the world with the Jesus loves me, this I know. And it's been great. I want the ushers to come. We're going to make an investment into their ministry all the way from Denver. I mean, let me tell you, it, uh, the greatest time of their day is when they get together with God's people, not on the road, traveling and flying and all this kind of stuff. So we're glad that you would invest in this couple and keep them on the road. You realize they can take music, this kind of music, anywhere and exalt the Lord. Uh, and so let's just uh, invest in them. Lord, thank you for Jerry and Rachel and for their gift that they've given, been given to give you glory and honor. Let us be a conduit of your love. I pray that you will bless the giver as we continue to encourage this couple to keep giving God glory everywhere they go. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen, amen. amen. I'm going to do a medley for you while we're uh, taking the offering. And uh, this is a medley that includes one of the great hymns of the church. It is well with my soul. I've combined it with a Rachmaninoff prelude. How many people enjoy at least some classical music in your diet? All right, you're going to hear a little bit of that along with a rendition of this great hymn. It is well. <laughs>
as you've watched some of the visu visuals, and I've had a couple of three people that I work along with, one of them is my son, that helps put the visuals back here. I think that enhances the concert a little bit, does it not? <laughs> you may have, in fact, been wondering, where'd you get that big choir? <laughs> because they sang a lot of the chorals in the, the piece, pieces that you've heard tonight. It happened like this, tell you quick. Uh, some of you knew Ralph Carmichael, do you know that name? Yeah. You do. Ralph was a great, the best big band arranger in the country, I think, but certainly when it comes to gospel music. He was on the West Coast, came to Denver one time and, and uh, brought his band along and played at the uh, basketball arena, 17,000 seats, and uh, it was a book, booksellers, Christian booksellers convention. And uh, he called me and he said, hey, Jerry, I, I, I need a choir to sing with me. And I said, well, I'm really an instrumentalist. I'm not a choir man so much. I said, the biggest choir I've put together is 12 singers. That's not many. I said, how many are you thinking? He said, well, I was hoping for a thousand. <laughs> That was scary, and I took on the job, and I brought, that was back when the churches all had choirs, you know, that was a while ago, and I got uh, the music directors from Denver, got them all together. We ended up with a thousand singers at the stadium. We sang antiphonally. We put 500 on this side, 500 on this side, and the big band in the middle, down on the floor. It was great. But when it was all over, many people came to me and said, is this it? This is the end of it? This is too much fun. I said, well, where, where are we going to sing and put a thousand singers? But I said, I'll try and do something about that. So I said, we'll have a rehearsal a week from Tuesday night at Denver First Naz, which I was in the staff of that church for uh, 37 years. And so uh, I have a little bit of clout around there. And so uh, I said, you show up if you're interested in singing the volunteer choir, and maybe we'll get 150 of these people back. Well, 400 showed up. <laughs> I thought, man, where are we going to put these? We had a 200-seat auditorium, and we built risers down on the platform, shoved the orchestra down, pulled some rows of seats out, and we got a 65-piece orchestra and 400 singers, and, uh, and shot six camera video of the whole thing. Fact is, we have some of those full two-hour videos. So it's a concert like tonight, but two hours with the big choir and orchestra and so forth. So that's what you're looking at when you look at those singers. That's not our church choir. <laughs> and uh, it kind of ran for 15 or 20 years, and then uh, like a lot of things, it runs its cycle. But <clears throat> I thought I'd just let you in on a little bit of of that. But let me just tell you that we have some uh, CDs. You're aware of that back on the back table. Rachel's going to put some of them up, up on the screen. Um, this is the Quiet Time series. Went over so well, I did Quiet Times Tranquility and Quiet Times uh, uh, Reflection. Thank you. Your eyes are better than mine. <clears throat> and we're selling those as a special. This is quiet piano. No orchestra, no singing, just pure piano. $30 for that set, or $12 each. So it'll put you to sleep. Don't play it in your car, okay, when you're driving. And we try to make each one of my CDs distinctively different in style. What you're looking at is, if you like your hymns and gospel, Celtic, jazz, um, classical, there's a CD that you'll like. And you say, well, um, boy, a couple Christmas ones, too, uh, and a Broadway one, if you like pop music, and you say, I have a tough time making up my mind. Well, we helped you with that process. We put 10 of them in a bag to say, I'll just take the whole bag, okay? <laughs> and what is it? $89. Such a deal. $89 for the whole bag. Uh, I don't know what you did during COVID, but we musicians, 
we went from 100 concerts a year down to about 40, and now we're down to about 15. Um, but um, that's partly because we chose to do fewer of them. And so we go places that we like to go, and we've, where we've had really connection with the people. Florida is one of those. Phoenix, Minnesota, that's my home. And so those are the places that we're going now. So God's taken care of us. And one of the things I did, I started writing a book. And, um, you know, we live in a world where the worldview is so totally secular, you don't dare mention the word creation in a school or an institution, a university. Used to be the universities said, come, this is a place where you can say whatever you think, whatever you believe. Not that way anymore. I mean, if you decide to get talking religion or creation, they'll stop you in the middle and send you out. That's been known to happen. So there are a lot of people that no longer believe in heaven. I believe in heaven. And so I put a, a bunch of reasons that I believe in heaven. And I put it in a book called, Is Heaven Really for Real? What are the odds? I'm an odds guy. I, when things happen in my world that can't be explained, then I say, that cannot have happened if there wasn't a God. Right. And people say, well, you know, even uh, the lottery, somebody's got to win it, no matter how big the odds are. But I say, I keep winning the, the lottery <laughs> time after time when it comes to my relationship with God and beating the odds. And so the first 10 chapters in this book are about beating the odds, things that have happened to me. I wish I had time to tell some of the stories, or a story, but I don't. Is heaven really for real? And if you have a son or a daughter and they've taken the low road instead of the high road, you got somebody in hospice, you got friends who you know don't know Jesus, you might decide, I've said everything I can, Maybe you want to let the book start speaking to them. Pick up a copy of that. Oh, and it, uh, the price on that is $16. I did a CD to go along with it. It's a double-length CD that includes songs like I Bowed on My Knees and Cried Holy, Amazing Grace, My Jesus I Love Thee, we'll finish with that. Uh, In the Garden, The Holy City, Oh, My Savior First of All. These are all heaven pointing songs, two dozen of them. And I said, Rachel, what should we charge if we throw this in with it? Well, she came up with a poster that said $19 for both of them. Well, so we've been selling both for $19. They're available tonight also. Have I covered it all, Rachel? She says, I have. Okay. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> before I finish tonight, how are we doing on time? Okay. Uh, thank you. Was there a pastor over here that said good? <laughs> We're about to wrap it up, but before I do the final song, one of the things I do, uh, enjoy doing, and that is improvising. Maybe you could tell. I mean, everything you've heard tonight <laughs> has never be, been played totally like that. I mean, it's different every time I play it. And so I'm just going to ask if you have three hymns that you would like me to improvise on, and I'll just try to weave them together and see where God steers the fingers. So shoot up your hand if there's one you'd like to hear. Yes. Oh, love that will not let me go. Okay, very good. Someone else. We shall behold him. Okay. And that first one again, oh, love, oh, love that will not let me go. That's a good one to select for a night like this. We're thinking about love. Jesus pianist. Pardon? She's a pianist. Oh, you're the, you're the pianist here? No. No, but she is. But you are a pianist. <coughs> well, that's why you said in a, a seat down real close. I notice it's kind of a, everybody kind of sits on this side. Right? 
fine with me. I like to be close to my audience. A love that will not let me go. And what a friend we have in Jesus. I heard that. And we shall behold him. Okay. You know which of those I'm introducing now? Somebody said they do, but I don't even know. So let me know.
I was raised in the uh, 60s and the 50s. <coughs> Come to think of it, a little bit of the 40s as well. <laughs> Pardon me for a moment. And I won't ask you, and I won't let you ask me any more questions about that, <laughs> or you'll start running the math. But um, back in those days, a popular thing, uh, talk about uh, ways, ways of expressing your love for somebody. We used to do that um, Like that. We'd make a heart on a notebook and initials. DC. That was Diane Christofferson. Can't even hardly read it, but uh, that was my junior high sweetheart, sort of the one that I um, ended up married. But <clears throat> we would write on our notebooks. Some guys would even carve the initials in a tree. Uh, taboo, or on a park bench. I mean, every place you would see these hearts. Do they do that anymore? <coughs> oh, that's good. I mean, I like the idea, but where they carve them is, is not a good idea. But um, and I remember <clears throat> we would just, you know, get a lead pencil and write it in the palm of the hand, even. Um, and uh, some guys, uh, I, in fact, used ink, and sometimes indelible ink, you know. Um, some guys, a lot of guys, friends of mine, they would write in lead, though, because, you know, next week, <laughs> you don't know about what, you're going to have to change the initials. Well, and then I was reading the book of Isaiah, the 49th chapter. And it says, see, I've inscribed your name in the palm. of my hand. And he didn't do it with lead or ballpoint pen or indelible ink, but his own blood. And it's not going to change. It's not going to change his mind. I'm so glad. And I like that verse. I've inscribed your name in the palm of my hand. There's a permanence to that. Because there's a permanence to his love. And I want to close tonight. Um, we've sung about his love for us. But this song, it's a hymn out of the hymnal. Also that you know, and it's our expression of love to him. My Jesus, I love thee.
I love thee because thou hast first loved me. And you purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on your brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. Standing O. Come on, stand up. Wow, thank you so much, Gary. Rachel, thank you so much. Wow. Music is the language of the soul, and I trust that these melodies will ring in your heart and that it will bring joy and hope into your life as well. We've been inspired this evening, haven't we? Yes. And uh, of all the songs that uh, the 85 nations that Dwayne has been in, singing the gospel. They didn't understand the English in a lot of them, did they, Dwayne? But they sure knew the melodies, didn't they? And so that's so wonderful. Grab somebody with a hand. Go ahead, Herb. Here you go. Lord, I pray that you go from hand to hand, heart to heart. Encourage us in this day and age when there's so much discouragement, would you encourage your people, make that song ring in our hearts victorious, that how much he loves us and we love him, yes. that others see the love of God in our life. So pass blessings and anointing from hand to hand. In Jesus' name, encourage everyone here. And everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you. They'll have some CDs in the back, so make sure you make yourself available to them.